Oh my goodness. All right, I, I'm all right. I apologize. I wasn't recording any of that, so I'm gonna have to repeat it real quick, just so and so on the recording. I apologize. All right, so square square roots. If you want the square five square, the opposites of square root is in green. Second square root twenty five. Enter to do cube root. I mean, to do the it's cubed. You got to use carrot, so it's five carrot three. Hit your right arrow to get out of your exponent, hit enter. And then to find a cube root, you want to put that nth root first. So since we want cube root, I'm going to hit that three. I'm going to hit second. I'm going to hit the carrot and then 125. And then get out of the cube root and press enter. So that's how you do square, square root, cube, and cube root. Sorry about that. I wasn't recording, but I want, be, I want people to be able to go um, over the video at their own time. Um, to be able to uh, to really understand some of this stuff, but and 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 I'm telling you, the key to passing this exam is learn how to use this calculator. What you uh, uh, am I right? Am I counting 15 people here tonight? Wow. Okay. Okay. So there we go. Let me save that so you'll have it now. So if you have your calculator, what you can do is, as you see, I took a screenshot so you can open your calculator and go and repeat it. So if you would do all the squares, do all the cube roots, I would recommend knowing one to 12 for all your uh, uh, squares and square roots. I would probably know one to six for your cube and cube roots. And that should be fine en enough for you to be able to, for, for the GED. That's what I would say. That's what I would recommend. But for any other radicals on your exam, you can use the, you can use the calculator. So if you know how to put them in when you get on your exam, it's, you, you can laugh all the way to the bank. Because I'm telling you that you're going to have the wife one, maybe, maybe two. All right, somebody sent in the chat. Oh, no problem. No problem, Ms. Coleman. All right, so any other questions about anything else that uh, you might have equations, problems with? Um, I'm, I'm using my phone because I can't get on my laptop. So uh, a linear equations or scientific notation? Which one first? Uh, let's do linear equations. What do you want to know about linear equations? I, well, I'm taking a science exam again mm -hmm. soon. I filled okay. the first one. Okay. Um, but it, um, I have some notes you previously gave me that said I need to know linear equations, scientific notations, table graphs, and charts. I know it's not a class that me. Now, I did mean medium, but I don't know mode. Okay, can anybody help him with mode? Now, you're probably not going to see mode on your GD um, exam. You will oh, it is see, not on the science. For, for, for the science, you yeah. will know, need to know mean. Mean. You need to know median. Mean and now, medium. Now, range, you also need to know, but they're not going to use those words. That's what they the might average. say is the variation, or they might say, diff, uh, they might use different words, but you will have to know mean, median, and range. I haven't seen mold on any practice test or the real exam. Mean, okay. median, and uh, 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 range. Those are the three you have to know. Now, when we talk about scientific notation, I'm glad you said that because there was two other people who are here tonight that also had issues with, with scientific notation. Because you now you probably won't see as much scientific notation on the math test, but since I'm covering math, it's also on the English exam. So two things you want to remember. Okay, so let me get my pencil here. Um, I'm just fabric glass that I have 15 people tonight like I'm loving it <laughs> and I'm going to make this up so I think uh, the other two people that also have problems with with linear um with our scientific condition are also here but this is good so let's take a big number uh eight five six seven nine three two one zero five I don't know just made that up so for the first thing you remember for scientific notation is used for very small numbers or very big numbers Okay, so now, um, what's a very small number? Okay, very small number. You know, you go out to the the third, fourth, fifth. Oh, for hold on, hold on, hold on. We got to pause. We got to pause because somebody just joining this. I want to tell it, Darlene. Okay, maybe she's not yet. So for every for very small numbers or very big numbers. Scientific notation is very easy. Remember when I went over powers of 10, 
You're just moving your decimal. So all you're moving your decimal is, is until you have a number in the ones place, okay? Where you only have one number in the ones place. There's no other digits in any whole numbers. You will only have one digit in the ones place. So if I'm doing this, one, two, three. My decimal point is right there. My two is in the ones place. So this is two. 0.1357 times 10. How many times did I move it? One, two, three, three. to the negative third power. That's now it. Why is, neg why is it negative third? You tell me. You tell me why it's negative. So remember, remember place value. Remember when I, we first talked about the place zeros. value. So we got one, the ones place, the tens place, we got a hundreds place. Know what the base means. So 10 to the zero is one. 10 to the first power is 10. 10 to the second power is 10 times 10, which is 100. If we go to the thousands, please, that's 10 to the third power. 10 times 10 times 10 is 1,000. So as your, as your exponent gets larger, the number gets larger. So we go thousands, 10,000, 100,000. Now, but if you're on the right side of the decimal, what does that mean? Remember, base 10 is very important. To, oops, I mean to put the minus on there. 10 to the negative second. So again, we got to start with what we know. So 10 to the negative first is really one over 10 to the first, which is one tenth. That's your tenths place. What is 10 to the negative second? One over 10 squared, which is one over 100, which is your hundredths place with a TH and so forth and so on. So what you should know right now is if you have a decimal, your exponent is going to be negative. If it's a whole number, your exponent is going to be positive. All right. So That's let simple. me ask you a question. Can mm -hmm. I, can, if it was in a word problem, and you may, you may have this sheet when I, when I say it to you, if, mm -hmm. you, if, you, go, if you go find it real fast, it says, uh, Clarissa are very thin hair-like projects from cells. They are 2.0. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. So you said 2.0 times 10 negative four power? Is it negative so, four? So each yeah. cilia is 2.0 times 10 to the negative four. Go ahead. It says a uh, millimeter Y. Okay. What is the maximum number of uh, clears? Uh, what's that? C I L L A? Cilia. Mm -hmm. Cilia that mm -hmm. would fit side by side without overlapping across the microscop microscopic side that is 25 millimeters wide. The answer is, it gives you A, B, hold or C, on, hold A. Hold, okay, okay, A, hold on, hold on. I can't write that fast, hold on. So. Each cilia is 2.0 times 10 to the negative four Y. How many, right. so this is how many, I didn't write it. How many can fit side by side on a microscopic slide that's 25 millimeters wide, okay? Right. Okay, now watch this. I don't really, I don't even need to, need to, need to, well, you can give me the multiple choice. Give me the multiple choice. All right, so uh, you got A, 8.0 times 10 to the negative six. You got mm -hmm. B, 1.25 times 10 to the negative three. You have C, 8.0 times 10 to, to two. To the second? Two square, yeah, two, yeah, two square. Mm -hmm. Or you have 1.25 times 10, uh, five. 10 to the fifth. Fifth power. Fifth power. All right, all right, so. Listen, okay, watch this. And I'm gonna make it very easy for everybody. This sounds like a problem that when I help people with science, many people have had a problem, have had an issue with this problem. This is one of the easiest problems on your science exam. Watch this. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna retrain my thinking because you can't imagine with 2.0 times 10 to the negative fourth is. You can't even imagine. How small is that? I don't know. So guess what? We're not going to do it. So what we're going to do is we're going to imagine 
it doesn't say 2.0 times 10 to the negative four. We're going to say each one is two millimeters wide. And let me show so 2.0. So let's just imagine that each cilia is 2.0 millimeters wide. So we have to worry about, oh, is that Darlene? Yes. Can you tell the class the good news? <laughs> Not yet. Hi, everybody. Hello. Hi. I thank God I took my test today and I passed it. Woo! I passed my math exam. Congrats. 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 Congratulations. Look, did, you, did you see that smile on her face? Look at yes, that smile. Yes. <laughs> Congratulations. Oh, I'm going to mm -hmm. smile when I pass too. <laughs> cool. So, is there cool. any advice you would give to your classmates? Yes, know your calculator. That is your best friend. <laughs> it was a lot of X, a lot of X, a lot of Y that you have to plug in in, in the computer. And um, they had a um, mean, not mean, a medium. Medium. They had okay. medium in there. I was there. just saying that medium mode range. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and mm -hmm. a lot of graphs. Mm -hmm. Wow. No. So, so, so make sure you know your linear equations. Make yeah. sure you know how to use your calculator to do linear equations. So, for example, this is what I've been telling you. Seven to ten problems out of 40 are going to be linear equations. Almost a quarter of your exam, <coughs> you have to be ready for that. Even what the else? science it is. Even the science. Yeah, a lot of words problem. Of course, it's a lot of word problems. What yes. state you took it in? And, um, uh, New York. Okay. Perpendicular. Yes, parallel and perpendicular, knowing yes, the slope and yes, equations of a line from parallel yes. and perpendicular. So a lot of people on Facebook say, no, that's not on the exam. Listen to what I'm no, telling you. Everything exam. that we talk about in these classes, everything I go over in my ebook, everything that you see in Schoology, uh, you're going to see some type of those problems on the exam. The reason why I make Schoology so hard, because I got some, uh, I got some so some people are maybe a little down. Oh, I only got a 40. I only got a 50. The reason why I make those exams so hard is because when you get a 50, a 55, a 60 on my exams, you ready to go. You ready to take the GD and go and pass it. I'm telling you. So all you have to do when you take your practice, if you had that 50, 60 range on my practice test, Call me, schedule your one-on-one, -on -one, you do our one-on-one, -on -one, you go take your test and get it done. That is be that simple. But listen, everybody congratulate it again. Congratulations. 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 Thank All right, so let's get back to the scientific notation. All right, so let's imagine each cilia is two millimeters wide. So now, now watch this. So if I said each cilia is two millimeters wide and my slide is 25 millimeters, how many can fit on this slide? So if each is two millimeters wide, how many can fit on that slide? 12. How'd you get 12? 12 times two is 24. But, but, but when you split up something, you should do what? Multiply, divide. Divide. So because we wanted each one is two, right? We splitting it up because we're seeing how many going to fit. We want to use division. By, by identifying and using whole numbers, we identify what operation we're going to use. Now, watch this, and I love it. This is what I've been trying to tell you. This is why the calculator is so important. Watch this. I'm going to show you right now. Boop, boop. I mean, I'm going to have to clear some of this out the way. Uh, okay, so I'm going to remember 2.0 times 10 to the negative 4. Uh, uh, all right, let me shrink some of this first. Let me try to make it a little bit smaller so I can fit that calculator on the screen. And this is what I've been telling you. Listen, I don't want you sitting there letting this stress you out. I don't learn how to use this calculator. But now with that word problem, this young man is like, oh my God, how do you do it? Watch this. I'm going to show you something that's going to be magical here. Watch this. Because all this you can do on your calculator, watch this. So since I'm doing division, I'm going to hit ND. Now, the actual slides aren't, I mean, the actual cilia aren't 2.0. They're 2.0 times 10 to the negative four. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, well, 25 divided by two is how I got 12 before. So instead of 25 divided by two, I'm going to say 25 divided by 
2.0 times 10 to the negative four. Mm -hmm. Get out of my fraction by hitting my right arrow twice, press enter, and it tells me 125,000. Okay, well, so it's two things you can do, 125,000. Well, guess what? I'm looking at my multiple choice. I remember Mr. Tinsley said if it's a decimal number, then it's, it's got to have a negative exponent. If it's a whole number, it has to be a positive exponent. So guess what? I know it's not a... No, hold on. I'm lost. I'm lost. If it's a decimal, it needs, it's a negative. Negative. If it's a whole number... All right, can you break that down a little bit more? Can you, can you, no, um, no, I can't, I can't break that. It's very simple. If you had if it's a, if you have a whole number, your exponent is going to be positive. If it's a decimal where you don't have any whole numbers, your exponent is going to be negative. It's, I can't break it down any more clear than right, that. So that's for example, common. 85 is a whole number. So it's 8.5 times 10 to the first. My exponent is positive. 0 0.002, 1, 2, 3, is 2.0 times 10 to the negative three. So if you have a whole number, your exponent is positive. If it's a decimal, your exponent is gonna be negative. So now, watch this, watch this. So, so now, I know 125,000 is a whole number, correct? Yeah. 125,000 is a whole number, boom. So right away, I know it can't be A, I know it can't be B. Well, I know, it starts with one, two, five. Well, the number can't start with eight. It can't be C. I'm done. It's A, it's B, it's D. So, right, it's D. I'm, I didn't mean to say B. I said it can't be B. One, it's D. Two. Now, now, or you can say, okay, how do I change this to a whole number? I mean, scientific notation. My decimal point is here. How many places do I have to move it so I have one digit in the ones place? One, three, two, three, four, five. Oh, you got five. Point okay. two five times ten to the fifth power. That's what oh, this is. The okay, so the fifth power is how many times you move the decimal. Well, remember when you're moving your decimal, you either multiplying or dividing by a power of ten. Since we had to move it five times, that's how that's the exponent you're going to get. If we had moved it to the right. It would have been negative five. Now, the last step is psh, Mr. Tinsley. Mr. Tinsley, I went through his ebook. I know how to do scientific notation. Watch this. Bam, 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 bam. 1.2 oh, times to the negative you. fifth. Okay. It'll do it for you. So you can yeah, so you. as a math teacher, I would rather you learn how to do scientific notation. But I also want you to practice using a calculator so you know how to do it. And then break these word problems down. You can't imagine what 2.0 times 10 to the negative 4 is. Okay, so let me ask you a question, Mr. Tenzi. Mm -hmm. On the sign exam, well, the, like, this, this is in, uh, 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 um, uh, uh, it's, it's in a, so it's in a sentence form, a sentence form. It's in word, a word drawn. I don't know how to explain it, but it's a word no problem. Word problem. Okay. Word problem. Mm -hmm. So with it being a word problem, will it be 2.0? Like say it's, it don't have to, it could be 3.0, 4.0, but that 25 uh, millimeter. So this is what I need you to do. How would I know? I need you, I, again, it's not how you know, because you got to practice. So what you goes go, on top, oh, what oh, goes on so, bottom? So, so what we're going to do, Remember, remember, if you're splitting something up, right, you're breaking it down. So you're trying to put those little things on the microscopic slide. So you draw a picture. That's your microscopic slide. Okay, well, the first one I'm going to put on there is two. My second one I'm going to put there is two. My third. So right there, that's telling you I'm splitting it up. Once you are splitting something up, that's the vision. So if I had my whole number, I would have did 25.2 and you got 12.5. So that's how Earl said 12. Okay. I could fit 12 on here. So I said, how did you get it? He said, I multiplied. I said, no, you didn't multiply. You divide. You actually divide. It. But most people think of multiplication division because they're inverse operations. That's how he got it. 
Because he said, well, I need to multiply. No, how you really do it is you, you define the correct answer. You got to divide. Once you know the operation, then you do 25 divided by 2.0 times 10 to the negative fourth. And then you use your calculator. Okay. So I'm going to go back. Me? So make sure you go on Schoology. On Schoology, I got a whole section on scientific notation. You got a whole lot of word problems that you can practice on. Now, if you are preparing, if anybody else is preparing for the science, make sure also you know Punnett squares, which is just probability. Okay. So once you, again, once you pass what the about math, functions? Is functions on sure. the science exam? Uh, now let me ask you something, sir. Is this your one-on-one -on -one session? You is you trying to monopolize monopolize the whole time? Can, can somebody else get some time, sir? Sorry. All right. Hi. I have a question. Well, I just want, if you can yes. answer that for me, what's the question? Um, is how function? do you uh, log on to school Schoology? Okay. Um, send me an email at uh passgd79 at gmail.com. <laughs> Is functions on a science exam? Um, it might be. I'm no, to I didn't get any. Lots of probability. Well, so, so, so what you will have probably on I a science exam in terms of deal with functions is how to evaluate a function. Because they could give you, they could give you a growth or decay as a function and then give you, so make sure you not evaluate a function. So that's possibly could be, an. I don't remember ever seeing one, but they could possibly give you one. But Punnett what about squares. Punnett, Punnett Punnett squares. squares. Yes, definitely. Definitely. I, definitely. I don't want to take the whole class up because I would I would yeah. ask Cause, you cause, go over Because that. that's what you that's what you try to do. <laughs> <laughs> he said, oh, I'm I, he said, I'm not trying to take the bet, but he is though. So, so we're gonna let somebody else get a question in here. <laughs> All right. Anybody okay. else? Um, Penny, did you get my email? Yes, thank you. Okay. What about right. linear, linear equations? What about linear equations? There's so much about linear equations. Yeah, like I don't know where to start from with that for science. I used to know how to do what I took the math. So, so, so what I want you to do is, I want you to go to, um, go over the links in school. You go over tables, charts, and graphs, and linear equations. So the first thing you need to do is find out what you know and what you don't know. So you this is what I would advise. A, this, uh, this, link for that. I will. This is what I advise everybody. Once you pass your math, if you don't have your science, take your science next. Right away. The don't science like is about 40 to 50 percent math. If you only need 55 percent to pass and 40 to 50 percent is math, if you just pass the math test, I will go right into the science. Most people that I help right after the math, and that's important, get to it right after the math. Most people pass their science one week or two weeks after passing the math. Yeah, I waited. Don't do what I did, because now you're going to forget <laughs> everything. I waited like two months. Mm -hmm. So any any other questions or anything? Any um, Did anybody take a practice test, a, a problem they needed help on? Um, because if not, we're going we're gonna, to... Um, uh, uh, start uh, quadratic equations. So I didn't want to. I didn't want to get. I didn't. I don't know if I wanted to start that this evening because for what I've been seeing is on the practice test, a lot of Facebook groups, a lot of people been having problems with quadratic equations. So for, before I start that, are there any types of problems or questions that anybody is having that they need some clarity on? Since I dropped a line in the chat. Oh, you did? I'm sorry. Oh, wow. Yeah, Let me see. yeah, but I wanted to see if we, um, if you can give me at least five minutes of your time in class, because I want you to go in Schoology. Okay. <laughs> Somebody said, all of it, all of it. <laughs> but one of the things I want you to do, and this, this is why it's important, Schoology is all set up for you. So each concept you go with, just take that pretest first, see what you know and you don't know. And that way you can you can gauge right there, okay, I need to put some more time here. Then as you score 75, 80 or above, move, move to that next section. You keep on moving and keep on moving. So um, Nina asked about percent. It's funny because I just was tutoring somebody in percent. I'm hoping I'm st I still have that open. Let me see, percent, 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 percent. Come on, be here, be here. You see how much work I'll be uh, helping people. Is that it? 
that might be it right there. Okay, here we go right here. So let me hide this. So percent problems are on your GED exam. Guaranteed they're on your exam. So what you have to know how to do for percents, first of all, let me write them down first. So everybody knows what they need to study for percents. So you need to know how to find the percent. You need to know how to find the part. You need to know how to find the whole. You need to know how to find percent change. Those are the four areas that you're going to have on your exam with percents. Now, I can tell you right now, at all the practice tests um, and people taking the exams, because, you know, of course, we're not talking about specific problems, but we're talking about areas. And most people have one or two percent problems. So the most, the ones you probably are going to get are part and percent. Sometimes you get whole, sometimes you get percent change. So these are the four you should know hands down. Okay, so Mr. Tinsley, how do you know that? How do we do how, how do how do I decide what I'm going to use? Okay, so let me go. Let's look at some word problems. I'm just going to pick um here we go right here. Solving percent problems. Okay, let's look at this first one. It says of the 850 students on campus, 26% had tickets to the weekend soccer game. How many students had tickets? So the first thing you realize is when you're talking about a percent, percent equal part over whole. Okay? Remember, fraction, decimal, percent equivalence. Well, what is a fraction? Part over whole. What is a percent? Part over whole. There is no difference. You have to be able to decipher what they're giving you. So there's three parts to every percent problem. Percent, part, and whole. So is the 850, is that going to be the percent, part, or the whole? Oh, whole. The whole. And of course, 20%, 26% is what? Part. Is the what? Part. part. Is the what? Percent. Part. Okay, percent. How do you know it's percent? Look, it's telling you. The percent sign. It's telling you. So now we know what we need to solve for. We have the whole, we have the percent, we don't have the part. That's the unknown. It's all algebra. So you identify what you have to make so you can understand what you need to solve for. We need so we need to solve for the part. Okay, let's look at this. Everyone should know this formula. If you don't remember by next week, because I'm gonna test you on a second. No, I'm not gonna test you, but everybody should know this formula. Percent is part over whole. So let me ask you a question here. Those are the three parts of a percent. How am I of this equation? But I want to solve for part. How can I get part by itself? Can anybody tell me how I can get part? 26% divided by 850? Listen to what I'm saying. You rushing ahead. Mm -hmm. Percent equal part over whole. Can anybody tell me how I can get part all by itself? How can I get part all by itself? Divide. Why did you say divide? So let me ask you. Algebra question. sometimes is divide or multiplication. It's one. So, it's so, one so, two. so no, it ain't no one or two. So there's it's not no one or two. That's no 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 no. Get that out your mind again. We got to go back to algebraically. So for example, you have to I, divide so, to get so, part by itself. Nope, nope. So listen, watch this. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna make it real easy for you. What side is part on? Right. Is it on the left I side of the equation the or the right side, side of the equation? No, right. left. Right. Oh, do the same thing on one side you do on the other oh, side. Hold on. We're going to go one step at a time. Okay, this is the percent is on the left side, right? Part is on what side of the equation? Left. Right. The right. It's on the right side. So part is on the right side of the equation. It's part all by itself. No. no. Okay. How, what do I need to get rid of so part is all by itself? The whole. You need to get the whole. So I need to get rid of the whole. How do I get rid of the whole? Do you put it on the other side? No, you just don't put divide, it on the other side. Divide the percent well, by the whole. Nope. I thought, nope. I thought it was okay. one side. You to the other. Take That's your time. I mean. If part, 
if we're trying to get part by itself, we need to get part by itself. We need to get rid of whole. What's happening to the part right now? It's being what? Being divided. You got to add. Divided. It's being divided by what? The whole. By the whole. What is the opposite operation multiplication. of division? Cross multiplication. Cross multiplication. Listen, you have to understand. One step equation is easy. Opposite of subtraction is addition. The opposite of addition is subtraction. The opposite of multiplication is division. The opposite of division. You have to know how to do a one step algebraic equation. Well, Mr. Tinsley, is this algebra? Yes. If you have an unknown, we're talking about algebra. So in order to get part by itself, I need to get rid of whole. Well, right now, part is being divided by whole. What's the opposite of division? Multiplication. Multiplication. So in order to get rid of whole, I got to multiply by whole. Now, Nina, what did you say? Whatever what? You're on the left, Whatever you're on the you right. On side, you Whatever you do opposite. on one side, you're going to... So if I multiply by whole on the left side, I got to multiply whole on the left side. What happens to whole over whole? What is whole over whole? Cancel out. And they cancel out. So now I'm left with whole <coughs> times percent equal part. Now this is telling you how to figure out part. Do we know what the whole is? Oh, it should be a uh, uh, way 50, right? 850. Times, what's the percent? 26. 26%. 26 what is 26% Eight. as a decimal? Point, 0 0.26. 0 0.26. So that's how you find the part. You grab your calculator and you multiply 850 times 0 0.26. Tell me what you get. 221. 221? So, how many people have students have tickets? 221 people. No refrigerator. That's all you need to do for any percent problem. Identify what you no know. Refrigerator. And then you, you, you manipulate the formula or modify the formula to fit what you need. Okay, let's try it. Let's try it. Let's try number four. No, number four is similar. So, we're going to not try number four. Let's look at number two let's look at number two we're going to identify those a coach purchased new volleyballs for his team the list price for one ball was fifty dollars but he paid 39 dollars for the ball what percent of the original price did he pay per ball what's the part what's the whole what's the percent if you know it So we're going to start with what we know. We know percent equal part over whole. Mm -hmm. Do we, does anything in this problem tell us what percent is? No. Okay, no. What is part? Is the, I don't know, is it $39? 39. How do you know it's 39? Per ball. Does he how do you know it's 39 and not 50? Because, because 50, 50 is a whole, right? Yeah. If you got a part of something, it can't be. If you got a part of something, it has to be less than other number, right? Yeah. So if all of something is 50, part of something has to be less than 50. So your number can't be higher if it's part. So this is what tells you the part is 39. My whole is what? 50. 50. So now I throw into my equation because this is what they want to know. What percent? I already know. I already got the formula. Part over whole. 39 divided by 50. And you get 78, 78%. All right, but Mr. Tizzy, can I ask mm -hmm. you, can I ask you something? Can you write these two, two numbers down for me? It's two mm -hmm. different numbers because I'm getting confused. Like, okay, I'm going to give you one. It says, uh, let me see. 111 is what percent of 300? Just put that on right there first. Okay. You got 300. And then go down, go down a little more. Mm -hmm. And then write 12 is 60% of what number? 
That's just divine. Yeah, wait. So, and watch I this. You, wait, I want to ask you a question about the first, the first top. Now, the first, first of all, right. identify what you know. That's listen, just, listen. I, I, I'm confused. As. I it, think okay. I know okay. Is okay. Old. So you. So okay. Right. So first of all, don't don't trick your mind saying you don't know. Yes, you do. Is there anything in that problem that gives you percent? No. No. So it's no, it's not percent. So you only got two things left, part or whole, part and whole. So out of 111 and 300, which one is the part? The 111 is the part. The 111 is the part. What's the whole? 300. 300. So we go back to the formula that I want you to know, and you got to commit to memory. Percent equal part over whole. My part is what? One eleven. Part is one eleven. My whole is what? Three hundred. Three hundred. Now you go to your calculator. Listen, I'm not. I'm not. Listen, we say we don't work for NASA. We ain't wasting our time. You need to know how to set up, identify what we had. So I'm gonna go to ND. I'm gonna go to one eleven over three hundred, and I'm gonna convert that to a decimal. Bam. Bam. Oh my God, that's well, what's the scientific... converting again? What Hold button on, let me push? I gotta I gotta t t t go back. Hold on. What button did you push to convert it? You tell me what, what number you what, what do I press to convert it? You tell me. Second and, and the percent sign. Nope. Okay, hold on. Let me let me let me clear the screen first so I can make the make it bigger. I'm gonna bring it back, Nina. Don't worry. Let me clear everything out first so we can see everything we need to do. This is the problem. This is what I need you to do. Stop. I need you to stop playing. Open up that ebook and go over the basics of this calculator. Because it's going to cause you too much turmoil if you don't. So watch this. Part over whole. If I'm doing part over whole, what should I press on my calculator? ND. ND, because I'm dividing. 111. How do I move to my denominator right down. not right arrow arrow down down, down, arrow. down. And put my 300 okay now if i hit enter it's going to reduce it to lowest terms right so what percent is 37 over 100 37 right because we know percent is out of 100 so 37 percent is your answer so okay well what did you do i didn't know 111 was going to convert to 37 over 100. So what I did was I said, okay, ND 111 <clears throat> over 300. And since I know I want to change it to a percent, I want to see a decimal first. So I'm going to hit my right arrow. My toggle button goes between changing something from a fraction to a decimal and back and forth. You should know that by now, how to use that key. It's your toggle button. It goes between fractions and percents. So I'm going to hit that toggle button. I'm going to press enter. There's my the decimal. The change to a percent, I hit second. And I hit this right above this right parentheses, convert to a percentage, okay, 37%. Got to know the basics of the calculator. You have to take time out, I would say a week to two weeks, to make sure you know how to do the things on this calculator, especially the basics. Fraction of decimal, percent of decimals, percents, all that you should know how to do. That should be easy. Okay, so hold on. So let me save that and let me go back to what I had on the screen before. So let me clear it. Let me minimize this and let me go all the way back so we can get that second problem on it. All right, Mr. Uh, Tenzi. There we go. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's do that second one. Okay. 12 is 60% of what number? If, again, is percent equal part over whole. So let's try it again. Let's, let's start where I told you to start. Percent. Let me try another. Let me. Let me Hold on, hold on. Percent equal part over whole. So let's start with the two. basic formula I told you. So hold on, hold on. Pause, pause. Percent equal part over whole. Okay. What do we know? 12 is 60% of what number? 12, is that the percent, the part, or the whole? That's the uh, whole. That's the whole. Okay. How'd you get? Why'd you say it's whole? 
it's just it's, it was not the percent. Sixty percent is the percent. Okay, oh. so let's so that's the percent. We know the percent. Now look at what it says though. It's common sense. Twelve is sixty percent of what number? Well, if it's not all of it, it can't be the whole. If it said twelve is a hundred percent of what number? Okay, then a hundred percent is all of it. We know what it is. We know twelve is the whole too. But what I'm saying is they telling you it's only 60%. Can 60% be the whole? Can it be all of it? No. So 12 is your what? It's the part. Right. It's your part. 12 to 12 times 5 is 60. No. Hold on. See, there you go. All you right. just trying to make something happen. You just try to take numbers and do a calculation. No, you have to start at a place that you know. So we know percent equal part over whole. We know 12 is the part. We know 60% is the percent. So now I have to solve for whole though. So let's look at our second equation. Now you could start from this equation, but let's start for the second one. Part equal whole times percent. Let's start with that second equation. Part equal whole times percent. Now, if I'm tr if I know the part and I know the percent, that means I need to solve for whole. So how can I get whole all by itself? I'm, if I'm using this equation here, how can I get whole all by itself? If I'm starting with part equal whole times percent. If I'm looking at that right side of the equation, whole times percent, and I want to get whole by itself, what do I need to get rid of? You need to divide. Div mm -hmm. But what am I trying to get rid of first? Trying to get rid of the percent. Trying to get rid of percent. How do we get rid of percent? You divide. By divide both. by percent. Whatever we do on one side, we what? On the other side. We do on the other side. On the right side, what happens to the two percents? Cancel out. They cancel. So I got whole equals part <laughs> divided by the percent. But we all started. See, what happens is when you're doing math, what's happening is you're remembering how to do it. And you're thinking, oh, this is how we did it in class. This is why I got to plug in. It's no way you should be doing 12 times 5 is 60. What does that have to do with the price of rice in China? <clears throat> you have to say, what am I giving? What do they want to know? So I got to mute somebody because somebody got a, is, is very loud in the background. So again, what do they want to know? They need, I want to know the whole. So I take my calculator and let somebody do it for me. My part is 12. And what is 60% as a decimal? Zero, zero, point zero, zero, point six, six. Zero. Point point six, zero, zero, six or point no, six, point zero. Six, zero. Point six, zero. So I need somebody to put that in the calculator for me because I won't be, I got too much on the screen. Can somebody put 12 divided by point six it's and 20. tell me what that answer is? It's 20. 20. So the answer is 20. Now, Always know what's expected. Say if I got eight, how can 12 be 60% of eight? 12 is bigger than eight. It can't be 60% of eight. So you know, if it's not 100%, you know I got it has to be a larger number. So I'm talking about the whole. I need to solve for the whole. Every part of that percent problem can be changed and modified to solve for the other. That's algebraic principle. So let me make sure we understand it. Let me start from the beginning. I'm gonna save this and, and I'm gonna clear it. And I'm gonna start with percent equal part over whole. So I'm gonna write it down. This is algebraic principles that you must remember. You should be able to solve for any variable in any equation, no matter what they give you. So right now, okay, that's the first equation, right? So I need to get part by itself. So if I want to get part by itself, okay. I need to get rid of whole. Well, part is being divided by whole. That's how you determine what the opposite operation is. Since I'm dividing, the opposite is multiplication. So I got to multiply by whole. Whatever I do on one side, I do on the other. The two holes cancel. I have whole 
pounds per cent equal part. Hold on, Mr. Tins, I thought you said part equal whole times percent. It doesn't matter. That's what an equal sign means. On both sides of the equation, it's the same thing. So if I want to rearrange it and say part equal whole times percent, I can. That's what an equal sign means. Both things mm -hmm. on both sides are equal, are equal. That's what it means. Part equal whole. Okay, well, Mr. Tins, how can I start for whole? Same thing. It doesn't matter which 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 equation you start from. So if I'm gonna start from here, I need to get whole by itself. So that means I need to get rid of percent. So part equal whole times percent. I want to get whole by itself. So I need. So this is what you're doing in all algebra. If I want to isolate a variable, if I wanted to get x by itself, if I wanted to get y by itself, and here I'm trying to get whole by itself. So when I look at that right side of the equation, whole is not by itself. Somebody's with whole. Percent is with whole. I need to get rid of percent. How do I get rid of anything? You do the opposite operation. So the opposite of multiplying is dividing. So I need to divide by percent because that's what I'm trying to get rid of. Whatever I do on one side, I do on the other. The two percents cancel. Whole is equal to part divided by percent. And that's your third equation you should know for percents. Percent equal part over whole, part equal whole times percent, and whole equal part divided by percent. And you should be able to do almost every percent problem they're gonna give you in the GED. Let's do one more practice problem. Oops, let me sit that up there for a little while longer so somebody might've been copying it down. I'm sorry. I'm putting it back up. Mr. Tinsley. Yes. But I have the question with the two problems. So, cause I see like the first problem I had given you is divide, right? And you're dividing the big, you dividing the 11 into 300. But with that 12 and the 60, you're dividing it, you dividing it by the bottom number. And that's where I'm getting confused at. It's, it, that's because you're trying to remember how to do it. Let's go back. Because what, you, what you're trying to do is you're trying to remember how to do it. Instead of saying, what am I giving and what do they want? So when you look at those two problems, the mm -hmm. first one, they're asking you for the percent. So because they're asking you for the percent, you're going to use the equation that says percent equal part over whole. And the second part, they gave you the part and they gave you the uh, 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 percent. So you're looking for the whole. So now you're looking for the whole. It's no one set way to do everything. Where are those two problems? There we go. Let me erase it. So let me go here. Erase this. Again, if you want to pass this GD math exam, the first thing you need to do is identify what's given. The second thing you need to do is identify what they want. What are you solving for? If you can't identify that, you're in trouble. So that's the first step. That's mm -hmm. how, see, people had these word problems. They're saying they're so hard. Listen, life is about word problems. If somebody told you you're making twenty dollars an hour and you're gonna work and you and you wanna work a, a, a twelve hours a day, how much you gonna make? You are gonna say twenty times twelve. If somebody say you made $300 and you worked 20 hours, how much did you make per hour? You're going to do 300 divided by 12. Those are word problems. Stop getting, stop focusing on thinking. If you get a word problem, you don't know how to do it. Identify what's given. Identify what they want. And that will give you the formula that you need to use on your exam. So right here, when I look at this, they're asking for the percent. That's what the question is asking for. So my mind says, how do I find percent? Oh yeah, that's easy. Percent equal part over whole. You start with your formula first. That's how to identify 11 and 300. Now, for example, say you did it backwards. Let me grab the calculator. Say you did it backwards, right? Say you, say you, oh, I don't know what the denominator is. Let me, hold on, let me, let me, hold on. Let me minimize that first. Let me save it first so you can have a screenshot. Because this is what you have to understand. Everybody makes mistakes. Don't be scared to make a mistake, okay? 
But what you know is when we talk about percent, 100% is all of it. So, okay, I did it wrong. I hit ND and I did 300 divided by 111. I got 2.7. Is that possibly, could that be the answer? No. Why? Because 100% is what whole number? Uh, 50? Nope. 25? Oh, so let's make sure we understand what percent means. So percent means out of 100, correct? Right. Right. So if I got 100 out of 100, what whole number is 100%? One. One. So if you got any number greater than one, you know you're wrong. Because 100% is one. Okay. I don't know. Are you sure about that, Mr. Tizzy? 100%. How do we change a percent to a decimal? Move it two places to the left. One, one two. two. Don't we get one? Yes. That's the basics that you need to know. You need to know, no, percent is out of 100. So 100 of all of something is 100%, which is the whole number one. So if you get an answer that's 2.7, well, it can't be. That's 270, 270%. That can't be right. You know what? Let me try the other way. ND, 111 over 300, <laughs> that makes a lot more sense. Knowing what's expected is also part of doing well in math. If, 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 some, if, if, if you had to give somebody, if somebody gave you $20 and you're giving them 100% back, how much are you giving them back? Oh, you what? $20. $20. <laughs> If 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 you get if you, if somebody gave you twenty dollars and you give them a hundred percent back, you give them twenty dollars. Yeah. Again, that's common sense. If somebody gave you twenty and you gave them back forty, that's larger than a hundred percent. Forty right. over twenty is two. You actually gave them a hundred percent more. You gave them two hundred percent. That's knowing if you, knowing percents out of a hundred. 100% is one. Let's, let's do, do a couple more problems. This, I ain't never see time with that. That's even seven o'clock. All right, let's look at this. Number three. A runner bought a pair of shoes from a sale rack. She paid $116.55, which is 70% of the original price. What did the shoes cost before the sale? So identify your giving. We know 70% is the what? The percent. The percent. You can't go wrong. It got a percent sign. Now, is 116 the part or the whole? And tell me how you can figure that out. Hold on. She paid 116.55, which is 70% of the original price. So that's the part. That's the part. That's the part. Wow, because they're telling you she paid. That's not that's lower than the original price, so it can't be the whole. So I know the part, I know the percent, I do not know the whole. So I need to solve for the whole. So whole equal part divided by percent. Got to know your formulas. 116.55 divided by 0.7. Tell me what we get. Uh, hold on. Let me tell you. 166.50. 166.50. So the original price was 166.50. Not hard. You just gotta know. You gotta know your formulas. You gotta know. I got 166.5. 166.5. But you always add a zero when we're talking about money. So if you took a practice test and it marked it wrong, I did correct it. But when you're talking about money or how much something costs, you need to add that second zero. There's no price. You will never go into a store and they're telling you something costs 166.5. It's 166,056. Don't you can't forget that zero when they're talking about money. Let's try one more. One more. Let's do uh okay. Let's look at um uh Number seven, Terrence bought a pair of shoes that originally cost $112. There was a blue sticker on the shoe box. 
How much did he save by buying the shoes on sale? Wow. This is a GD question. I, I, this is a GD question. Terrence bought a pair of shoes that originally cost $112. There was a blue sticker on the box. How much did he save by buying the shoes on sale? 25%. All right, Terrence brought a pair of shoes. Send me really an answer in the chat. 112. It was a blue sticker on the shoe box. 25% off the blue slippers. 25% off, but that's not what they're asking. They're asking how much in dollars and cents did he save by buying the shoes on sale? Oh, that's that is um uh, he saved what it is is one hundred and twelve oh, times oh, twenty five. Oh, oh, send in the chat. Send in the chat to me. Oh, I can't because I'm at work. I can't. I'm okay. Okay. my okay. phone. We got to see what's going on my computer. Man. When you get a chance, I, I can't. I can't do nothing on the computer when you send it to me. It's in the great I screen. It. I know it, but I can't send it. Yes. Okay. okay. So let's give everybody a couple minutes. Let's give everybody a couple minutes and let's look at this problem. Terrence, Terrence bought a pair. Now, let me ask you a question. Can $4 be a possible answer? No. Okay, watch this. I'm going I'm to I'm show you something. I need, I need, I'm, I'm at the mute somebody because it's some type of echo going on. $4 and 40 Listen, watch this. Watch this. Let me ask you a question. And this is something, this is the mental math again. Watch this. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you something. And this is again that mental math is very important because two people said four dollars. Right? It's if something, right. If, if, uh uh let's see. I'm not sure I didn't do it yet. So I still got about four people who answered, and I have four different answers, but let me make sure I didn't even do it yet. But let's 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 go over it and how you do it. First of all, let's use mental math. If $112, the, the shoes cost $112, right? What would 10% off be? What would 10% off be? $10. Nope. Mm. Does anybody know how to find 10% of any number? Is it 102? Nope. Definitely not. 102 is close, close to 112. That's like 90%. How can we find 10% of any number? How can we find 10% of any number? Multiply it, right? 12 times 10. And what do you get? And what do you get? Oh, I'm, I can't calculate it. <laughs> so Claudette said $11.20. 11 but I'm going to yeah. tell you an easy way. What you should know is 10% it's the same as 10 over 100, which reduces to 1 over 10. So it's the same as dividing by 10. To find 10% of any number, you divide by 10. Now, we should know, or you should know, the power of 10. When I'm dividing by 10, I have one zero. That means I'm going to move my decimal one place. So 10% is going to be 11.20. So it's no way $4 can be a possible answer if it tells you the blue sticker is 25% off. You can, you should be able to look at that and say 10% is $11.20. Why? Because 10% of any number is just moving the decimal one place to your left. So right away, $4 cannot be the answer. It's impossible because 10% is 11 dollars 20 cents. So there's no way 25% off can be four dollars and forty eight cents. Mm. So about five people said four dollars and forty eight cents. I don't know where the four eight four forty eight came from, but let's go to our calculator. <laughs> so let's look at this problem. So let me let me save it. And uh, hold on, where did my? There we go. Let me save it. Again, go back to oh, what yeah. we know. 
What we, how you start any word problem is identify your givens. What do we know? What do we know? What do we know? We know this cost. We cost know the cost. The cost is one twelve. Is that whole part or percent? Part. Part. So I heard. So I heard part. I heard one, two, three people say part. How many part. people say it's the whole? I heard another person say part. How many people say it's the whole? Nobody. How many people say it's the percent? Nobody. There we go. That, that's the problem. If the shoes originally cost one twelve, that is the whole. That's the original price. Remember, if something was part, it's less than. Right? So, this is your whole. It has a blue sticker. It's nowhere in the problem. It just tell you it has a blue sticker. What does the blue sticker tell you? 25% off. The percent. That's how much you get off. So if you want to know how much you save, you take that 112 and multiply it by 0.25. Remember, why? Because part equal whole times percent. 28, right? 28, uh, uh, 10 percent, so one quarter. I think that's 28. $28. 28.56, 112. Yep, $28. So how much do you save is $28. That's how much you say. Now, what some people did is they said 112 minus 28. And it got 84. Mm -hmm. Did they ask how much the, co the shoes cost after the discount? Or did they ask how much did she save? How much did she save? How much did she save? So did she save $28 or did she save 84? 28. 28. She saved 28. She saved 28. The new price that she would have paid would be 84, but that's not what they asked. The answer to this question is $28. Because what happens, right? So what happens is a lot of people remember, oh, this is how we did it in class. We multiply by the percent and then we subtract it from the original price. But you got to know when to subtract it from the original price because that's what they're, you got to understand what they're asking. If they ask, how much would you save? You would save $28. How much would the new price be? $84. That's a totally different question. So the only way, this is how you get used to, this is how you get used to knowing what, to, what they're asking for. Do a bunch of problems. So practice percent, get a 90 to 100%. Practice part, get a 90 to 100%. Practice whole, Get 90 to 100%. Mix them all up, take them again, and keep practicing until you score 90 to over 80%. That's how all these word problems, like, look, I just, it's so crazy. Look what I just did. Somebody had a book, because I scour the internet every day. Look at the name of this book. 501 questions to master the GED. What? That's a whole lot of work. But the key point you got to realize is when you see 501, you say, oh, my God. But the key thing that 501 is telling you is the only way that you're going to pass this GED is you have to practice, practice, and practice some more. I'm going to write it down. <laughs> I, I respect practice that, that is the only way you have to do enough problems so this is why I made Schoology There's no, you're ne you never can run out of problems if you need more practice go to CK12 they make them harder you need more problems go to Khan Academy you need more, pro you need more problems go to my the problems I made up for you you got enough, there's nothing that you want that they don't ask. But the problem is you got to practice. So you got to know. So, okay, this is a part problem. So you can identify it quickly. Now, this is what the GED is going to give you. They're going to say, okay, um, 
uh, uh, Jarrell went to dinner. And he paid $135. Oops, $135 for dinner. Is an 8% sales tax, 15% gratuity. What was his total bill afterwards? This is an everyday problem that we all go through when we go to the restaurant. We should know how to do this problem. This is a 15 second problem using the calculator. I'm not even telling you to do a percent problem by hand. You should say, okay, well, in order for me, to find a bill, that 8% is added onto my bill. So the first thing you should be thinking is, okay, my bill is 100%, my tax is 88%. So is tax added on your bill or taken off your bill? Add it. So I'm adding it. So watch this, $135 times 1.08. So after tax, after tax, my bills are $140.80. Well, now I got to tip them. Tip them is, tip is 15%. Is tip added onto your bill or taken away? Add it. Add it. So 100% plus 15% is 115%. What is 115% as a decimal? What is 115% as a decimal? Move it over two places over. 11.5. Okay. Not 11.5, you gotta move it two places. 1. 1.15. 1.15, 1. so I'm gonna take that 145.8 and I'm gonna multiply that by 1.15. Enter, my total bill, $166.67, I'm done. That's a two-step problem done, I'm going finished. They're gonna give you the percent. They're going to save as added or deducted. You got to ask yourself, is it added or taken away? Most people, this is what they do. This is how they're taught in class. Hold on. So let me clear 135, 8, and 15. Let me, let me clear it first. This is how people are taught in class. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but I just did that in 15 seconds. But this is how most people are shown in class. They are taught to say, okay, my bill was 135. I need to find what part is 8%. So I got to times it by 0.08. That's how much tax is 1080. I need to add that to the original total plus 135. Didn't I still get the same thing? 145.80. Instead of doing that, 135 times 1.08. Oops. 1.08. 1.08. 135 times 1.08. Then I get the same thing. So what happens is people are doing all this extra work because they're doing this. 135 times 0.08. I change it to a decimal. Then I add that to the 135. Enter. Then I got to take 15% of it times 0.15. And then I got to add it back to my original price, which is 145.8. Uh, then I still get 167.67 still got the same thing. You have to know what's given. So if that percent is added on, just add the percent, change it to a decimal multiply. Because all I did is do 135 times 1.08, enter times 1.15. Done. Fit five seconds. So the only way you can do that, though, is you have to practice enough where you're seeing these different word problems. So when you see it on the GD, oh, I'm ready. It's, oh, I got this. And that's what you do. Practice, practice, practice. I can tell you right now, as anybody who's taken, taken and, and, and passed the practice test, I can tell because I can go on my school G account and I can see they took practice GD1, practice GD2, practice GD3. Okay, then I can see them saying, okay, well, I only got a 48 on my practice GD1. But you know what? Practice GD1 gave me feedback. Let me watch the videos so I can correct my errors. Okay, I understand how to correct it. Let me try it again. Okay, now I'm up to 65. 
You know what? I'm still getting some problems wrong. Let me go back to the feedback. Let me make sure I do it. But before I do it, let me do practice on the areas I got wrong. Okay, I've been practicing. I got it. Now I'm up to 75. You know what? Let me go to the uh, practice GD similar to actual test where I'm getting timed and I don't get feedback. Let's see how I do. Oh, wow. Score to 52. Not too bad. But let me go back to three. And this way, you pre that's where you can identify what types of problems are giving you trouble. Then you go to that, that area and you work on that area till you got it. Then you move on. Then before you know it, you're ready to take your exam and pass. I'm giving you the formula. You don't have to figure out anything. I'm telling you, do the ebook for two weeks. Go through my practice that I have in a book. Log on to Schoology. Take your pre-test pre to see where you are. Any ones that you score under 80, make uh, uh, review it, get over 80, then move to the next section and keep on moving on. In 30 days, you'll pass. You do that every day for about an hour, hour and a half every day. That's how I calculated was an hour and a half a day. If you give me an hour and a half a day going through those steps in 30 days, or maybe a little longer, sometimes a little longer, you'll be ready to take your exam and pass. So now what you have to ask yourself is, when can I practice? So what you need to do is, okay, I go to work here. I go to school here. You know what? When the kids go to sleep, I can get an hour in there. Something has to be sacrificed. So that hour to hour and a half, you got to find time where you practice in math every day. What did one of your classmates say? He said, I passed my math. I left it alone for a while. And now I got to relearn it. No, you take your math, take this practice test, hit Schoology, pass your math, study for your science. If you, if you need help passing for the science, call me. I'll help you with the science too. The science is almost all math. One session after you pass math, I can get you to pass science. One or two at the most. Pass your science, then you got the other two to go if you, if you haven't gotten them already. It's really, really that simple. But you have, to, you have to sacrifice something, an hour to an hour and a half every day for math. Because you see what happens with most people is once they leave math alone for a while, now you, now you got to do double the work. Because now you got to go back and say, oh, my God, I forgot how to do this. What happens when you went over something you already know? You get frustrated. And you get mad at yourself and you start blaming yourself. And then you cause frustration. You cause anxiety. Listen, I'm telling you, go over the ebook. Give me two weeks. Give me two weeks. Go through that ebook about a lesson or lesson two every day for about two weeks. After you finish the two weeks, start on the practice. I'm telling you, it will make a job a lot easier. But the, oh, Mr. Tinsley, the book is 137 pages. That's why I said one or two lessons a day. But what you'll notice is a lot of the problems that you'll see now when you take your practice test and you got that calculator is easy. For example, let me just show you real quick before we leave. I'm just going to show you something real quick. Let me see if I got the study guide open. Uh, let's see. Matter of fact, I'm just going. I'm just going. Let me see if I can find one. I'm gonna, and I never used this. I just downloaded it today. I never used. It. I don't even know what it is. But let's just find a, a linear equations problem. Let me see. Now, watch this. Watch this. That problem looks hard. Am I right or wrong? Let me hold on. Let me clear everything. For, for what values of x is this function undefined? So most, a lot of people may look at this and say, oh my God. Oh, can y'all see my screen? No. Oh, that's why. So let me just do this real quick. I'm sorry I went over. If you need to go, that's okay. Now look at this. For what values x is, is, is f of x undefined? Well, first of all, when you see that word undefined, you know your denominator can't be zero. Cannot be zero. Right? So you're looking at uh, we this. We still can't see your screen. You still can't see my screen? No. Hold on. What is going on? How about now? Still now. It says... I can started it. screen sharing. Can okay, y'all can see it? I can. Now, watch this. I'm going to show you something. Most people look at this problem 
And because the denominator says x squared minus 3x plus 2, they don't even know where to start. Watch this. I'm going to show you something. Watch this. They gave you the answers. Minus 1, store x. Write the function in. Nd, 3 over x squared minus 3x plus 2. Did I get, did I get a, a undefined? No, I didn't. So anything with minus 1 is OK. So it cannot be A, it can't be C. Let's try the next one. Let's look at B, watch this. One store X, go back up to my expression, hit enter. Oh, you can't divide by zero. So I already know one, one makes this undefined. So I know one. So now both B and D have one. So I'm gonna go here, let's try three and two. Three, store X. Go back up to my expression. Press enter. Do I get an error? No, I don't. Now, so I know it can't be B. My answer is D. That's what I'll do in any work. That's by using the multiple choice and knowing undefined, knowing your denominator can't be zero and plugging it in. Most people would get this problem wrong. Most people wouldn't even know where to start because they see this x squared. Oh my God, is this a quadratic equation? What do I do? Oh my God. And they wouldn't even know what to do. But they gave you the answers by knowing how to store a variable and plugging it into a, a function or an expression. What did that young lady say she passed? You got to know how to store a variable, a number into a variable and be able to plug it in. It will help you with undefined. It would help you with evaluating algebraic expression. It will help you with solving quadratic equation. It will help you with evaluating a function. Well, that's four areas right there. And most people who took the test, 143, 140, they only miss by two or three points. You got to master this calculator. It'll make your job a lot easier. This is what they wanted you to do. This is what they wanted you to do. They wanted you to factor this quadratic equation. So they wanted you to see A, B, C. I'm going to factor C. So I got one times two and minus one times minus two. Okay, what pair is going to give you minus three? Minus one, minus two. So that quadratic equation factors out to X minus one, X minus two. So this whole problem then becomes three over x minus one, x minus two. Well, find your zeros. What values of x will make your denominator zero? The opposite of minus one is plus one. The opposite of minus two is plus two. Did we still get the same exact answer, one and two? So that's how they wanted you to solve it algebraically. But what I'm trying to explain to you, take the two weeks to learn this calculator what you realize you can do a lot of these problems while they were doing algebra they give you the multiple choice plug them in then you don't have to waste five minutes trying to okay how do you factor the quadratic equation okay a a x squared you don't have to waste all that time uh, listen my advice to you i know is debate the book is long take two weeks to learn this calculator when you finished you will notice a lot of these questions will be so much easier. They ain't even funny. Like you're going to be asked to find an equation from two points. You're going to be asked that. Let me see if I can find one. I don't even, let me see real quick. Is that seven? What does seven say? I never even looked in this thing before. Let me see. Let me see if I can find a table of contents. And this is what I'm telling you, like uh, uh, linear equation 77. All right, so let's go to 77. Let's see if I can find one. That wasn't 77. <laughs> the pages are wrong. 77. I'm, I'm a sh I'm a, and this is what I want to show you because a lot of times we're spending all this time how to figure out this and how to do that. And oh my God, how you do this and how you do that. I'm trying, that's a whole lot of word problems. I'm trying to give it to you as the easiest way possible. Linear equations. Come on, let me see. Find an equation with two points. I just need one of them. Let me just show you. Uh, I can't even find one. Mm -hmm. See how you I want to find some. That's system of equations. I can't even find one. All right. I'll show you next time. I'll find one. But my point is 
instead of spinach, you want to know how to solve something. The first thing you got to know. So these are my tips for you. Okay, matter of fact, hold on. Let me write them down. Let me write them down. Let me write them down. And this is the last thing we're going to do for the night. Uh, where is it? Context. Identify your givens. That's first. Identify what they want to know. And I mean they, the question. Eliminate. Any, uh, how would I say, eliminate any uh, answers you know it can be. Eliminate any, how can I say that? Um, matter of fact, I'm going to make something up. I made something up for this. Let me see if I can find it. Let me see. You know what? I made something up exactly for this right here. I made a, a shortcut to help people remember. Um, let me see if, hold on. Give me two seconds. I apologize. Uh, motivation. Let me see if it's under motivation. Motivation. Okay, check. There we go, right there. So I call. So I made a name up for it. So I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do it with how, how I wrote. How I did it. So what I said was, this is what I called it. I called it relax. I said relax. Okay. So I said, read, question carefully. Second thing I said, examine, examine each answer. So that way you can eliminate. Then I said, label your givens. I said, always check your work. And I said, X out, I said always, X out, let's say, X out answers that you know are wrong. X out any answers you know are wrong. Then at the underneath, I have, don't stress out. Oops. Don't stress, breathe. So if you notice, each letter is a part of relax. Read question carefully, examine each answer, label your givens, always check your work, X out answers you know are wrong. Don't stress and breathe. That's a relax, I made that up, I don't know. Um, I got a whole image and everything, but I made that up one night. The biggest thing you're gonna do is, you want to take a relax, you want to relax, you want to take it easy. Answer the questions you know you can do. So if something's too difficult, skip it, flag it for review. Finish the exam first. Then you come back to those harder questions and you relax. Read question carefully, examine each angle, the answer, label your givens, check your work, exile any answer you know wrong, pick your answer. You're going to pass. All right, so it's, it's at past 7.30. I'm sorry I went so long. Sometimes I get a little excited. I apologize. Any questions before we leave? Mr. Tensi, can I have a converse with you at the class real quick, though? Yes. Okay. Thank you, man. You have a good night.